We are live. Welcome to She-Hulk Episode 7, Thoughts. This episode is called The Retreat. So, spoilers for the MCU leading up to this point, including this episode. And, yeah, uh, another episode that does not feature Daredevil. I don't mind. Um, we know he's coming. And I, I really love this episode. This might be my favorite episode. And, yeah, the first several minutes of this episode, at least four minutes, are 100% montage. We see Jen and Josh on many dates, and one culminating in her letting him in, them hooking up, but he's not there in bed the morning after. She texts him how happy he is, and then has to stop herself from texting him again. Checking for text Saturday, she still hasn't heard from him. And I appreciate that, like, the first thing we see is her, like, getting out of the shower, and there's no male gaze. It's just, you know, because, I mean, of course she showers, and that's not a big deal. Doesn't have, yeah. You know, it, it underlines she's preparing for a date. She, you know, and she's excited about preparing for the date. But it's from her perspective. And I can imagine some people might say it's like contrived how she ends up at the at Blonsky's retreat. I mean, I really loved her time there, so I'm I'm okay with it. But yeah, you know, the parole officer I th or so, something like that calls her saying, you know, the um the 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 thing that's supposed to keep his powers you know it's not responding and you know there's no you can't call out there you can't you know there's no cell reception there's almost no cell reception on the entire compound and they don't have Wi-Fi, so it's just, yeah, he has to go and physically check, you know, he, he can't just, like, ask. Yeah, and he does also end up having to, like, fiddle with it to, to get it to work properly again. And, yeah, you know, Jen is asked to go with, just in case the Abomination won't cooperate, so there's a Hulk there. I gotta say, based on this episode, I kind of don't want Blonsky to turn into the Abominate. Like, yeah, I want there to be a Hulk in the Thunderbolts. You know, that's not... No one's surprised that that's something that, you know, that would be great. But I kind of hope it's gonna be a different Hulk. Because I want Blonsky to get... that. Like, he's... He's so much happier. He's so like, at peace with, and, and he has legitimately helped these, you know, and apparently they are all, for like, Manbull, El Aquila, El Aquilar. My Spanish teacher would absolutely be furious with me for getting that wrong. I forget what the the guy who thinks he's a vampire, what his name is, and then Porcupine, you know, and and yeah, Wrecker, who you know, the Wrecking Crew is also from the comics. All of these are from the comics, and it's like, you know, well, what happens to them when they no longer want to be villains? Because obviously they've got some issues. I love how the Shining, the drive for Jen to to the compound is and she's singing Mbop checking the text from Josh and you know I forget who pointed it out but yeah it kind of looks like oh she's she's gonna she's gonna crash like she, you should not be checking texts while driving and and you know the road is not completely straight either so so yeah and yeah and when they get that you know she she wants to get it over with so she's like honking the horn. He's like, you're honking your horn at a 10 foot tall lizard monster, you know. And yeah, things are fine. But ah, oh, yeah, I noticed that it was behaving kind of strangely. 
and it's like because he like it it came into contact with an electric fence because he was trying to catch his favorite chicken now I may be a complex city person but I happen to know that my father maybe he'd maybe try to avoid the electric fence but he's he's had to chase his chickens on multiple occasions because they are incredibly good at getting out of like he's he's done ever he's he's clipped wings he had which for for the animal lovers out there I am one I I love animals he does it in a way that doesn't hurt you know it's just just enough that they can't fly you know there are some of them have realized that if they jump from one slightly tall thing to another slightly taller thing they can jump over the fence so he's had to move things and make the fence higher and all this yeah chickens are adorable but they are not great at staying put un unless it is like I I've I think some chickens are, but a lot of chickens like they just, they kind of they like to roam, you know, and yeah, and and I love Jen. It's like, did you say chicken? <laughs> like, she's like, um, I spent hours of my weekend driving to nowhere because of a chicken, you know, <laughs> just, just yeah. That's that's and yeah the the group therapy is just a great scene and I forget um I want to credit him because it was a really great point I'm just gonna try to see so let's see she Hulk and I swear I'm not gonna spend forever on this Tyler Calvert I believe it was pointed out that. You know, it was it was pretty good until Wrecker joined. Then it then it was like really really funny from there on out. And let's see. I honestly thought that they were all gonna turn on her and try to get her blood when they convinced her to transform back into Jen. And some of my fellow YouTubers really saw it that way as well. And Wrecker claims to have changed after she previously previously awns him. A, another situation where you know she has some control of, over the narrative, you know, and but she doesn't. She doesn't see the previously on. She's aware that it exists and that we can see it, but she doesn't see it, and she has the power to previously on. So she has some control over the narrative. And I love the line, you attacked a woman four to one. You absolutely were supervillains. And they talk about Jen possibly being ghosted. And she talks about wishing more people would like Jen and not want She-Hulk. And I love when the group want to kill Josh. Like, Josh has made an enemy of this entire group. And, you know, the... I, I I'm afraid I still forget his name, but the the wannabe vampire is like maybe he wants your blood, you know. And Jen, I think you're great and tasty. Um, going off the what was it? I'm I'm uh, yeah. I'm I'm going off a, a ledger. Somebody bail me out. Yeah, just in general, you know, I don't know. I don't love the the gross out gag of Porcupine taking, you know, he start he takes the the mask or helmet off, and you know everyone's like, oh, he looks ugly and he smells, and you know, Blonsky is diplomatic enough to just say, you know, maybe maybe wait to take the rest of the suit off until we can get it cleaned or something like that, and just. I don't know. I, yeah, not really a fan of that, but that was pretty much it. And, you know, Jen ends up saying, 
I can't believe I'm going to say this, but I'm hurting for a yurtin. And it, yeah, you know. And they, they're all standing, like, anticipating outside. And, you know, the door, you know, she opens the door and walks out. And she looks just completely, you know, ah, what's the word? Like, she's done. She needs to, to like, rest. And, and they're all, like, good or bad, good or bad. And she's, you know, because she can't, like... Yeah, you know, because she's she is exhausted, you know, which I I've, I've never yurted, but I hear that it can be exhausting, but also satisfying. So it's that thing of, ooh, did she did she like hit the is is this a you know Goldilocks situation? Did she yurt for the exact right amount of time, and she you know she got it out of her system, but she's you know she's exhausted. Or did she accidentally yurt a little too much, and now she's like, uh, you know, completely so? So, yeah. And and the moment she thumbs up, they're just they're so happy for her. And we go back three days. I gotta say, like some part of me, like the the part of me that still has some hope, was like, maybe right after they were together he was kidnapped and he's been like trapped for those three days no not 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 the case you know josh is revealed to be evil he got her blood and just, you know some people say oh you know you can see she has like mole, what appears to be moles that was where he you know extracted blood yeah i i that that makes sense to me. Um, I believe it is. <clears throat> I believe it is possible to take someone's blood when they're like really fast asleep, and you know if you're if you're very careful about it. So yeah, in real life, it's not in order to take the woman's blood, but many men will pretend to be a good person until the woman lets them close. You know, he even takes a picture of her in bed without her consent. Like, she's apprised that he wants everyone to know he won. You know, like, like he's he's going to show this picture to his friends like he's, like, showing a Super Bowl ring or holding up a trophy that they, they won, you know. And, and some have also pointed out they're going to try to use that to destroy her reputation. Yeah, great episode. Possibly my favorite so far. Now... I want to say I don't get the sense that the people who made the show think that therapy in general is bad. You know, it's it's not that kind of joking as as far as I can tell. They're just making some jokes about something that they're very familiar with to ease tension. You know, there are a lot of jokes in pop culture about how therapy is awful and and such. I really don't think cuz it worked. You know, all of these people are better including Jen like you know the the I don't know if abomination himself went through therapy since he is the therapist here but he's clearly a lot better off and he's he's really good at calming situations down you know and the you know I mean I don't think he loses his temper even once in this episode and and you know yeah <sighs> If, if he did, they might be afraid that he'd turn into abomination. But even so, like, he is tremendous. Like, if you haven't watched The Incredible Hulk anytime recently, you know, try to rewatch that. He is not, he has zero chill in that movie. He is a very intense person. And, yeah, he's, he's a completely different person. And that is, you know, jail can really change you. And... Sometimes it is for the better. And yeah, like all of the people there, every single one is better off than they were before, you know, they, they had this, this group therapy and the, the yurtin, you know. By the end of the episode, it still seems like this member of the Wrecking Crew is a, uh, what's the word? Like he, he seems to have reformed, you know, he, yeah. So, the, yeah, 
Seriously, when Wrecker apologized, while obviously it is nice to get an apology, that's a bare minimum for that kind of thing, She-Hulk and we, the audience, really wanted more of a fight. Like, personal growth is great, but come on, we really wanted to see her beat him, and he's like, like no, but I've changed. Honestly, I apologize. Here's why I did what I did. I mean, once he apologizes, puts up absolutely no fight, at that point, you, you have to forgive him, or you're the jerk. So I really love that the show handled it the way that it did. You know, movies like Parting Shots, Big Bully, and Anger Management have the protagonist confront someone that used to be really awful to them, used to bully them, with the protagonist still resenting them, and what do you know, they're still the jerk. So he and you, the viewer, get to hate them and not feel bad for it. And I think this is much funnier, and it takes the high... Like, it was so funny when she was like... You know, I, I can't believe you. And, and he's like, he's not even putting up a fight. He's not saying, please stop her. He's he's like, he understands. You know, he's like, you know what? I was really terrible. You, you're you allowed to, to, to hit me. And, you know, well, now it's not even fun anymore. <laughs> Just. And let's see. Yeah, and it's also like, that actually is a positive, like so many MCU projects, it's like, oh, you know, look at this evil person. And don't get me wrong, they do really evil things. I personally think evil is a choice. It is not, it's not a permanent state. And so many of them end with the bad guy dying, sometimes a really brutal death, you know, as brutal as they can get with PG-13. You know, I mean, think about how many people have died from, like, explosions and that kind of thing, you know, in, in the MCU. So, so yeah. And, yeah, here is the, the, like, as a progressive, you know, ideally you want them to reform. You want them to become, you know, the uh, help, you know, good good members of society, again. You want them to contribute to society again. You want them, you want forgiveness and healing. And, you know, studies show that restitution and rehabilitation are much, much more effective than, like, um, punitive. You know, if, if you just put someone in prison and they're there for a really long time and they just get worse as a person, you know, they, they leave prison, they're they might go back to prison not very long after, even for no good reason. And that does not lead to more productive members of society, which, yeah, restitution and rehabilitation do. You know, so, so yeah, this is the progressive way to approach that kind of thing. And, I mean, the show still acknowledges, you know, she was, uh, he was a supervillain to her. You know, he, they were, they attacked a woman four to one. That's, yeah monstrous and the the yeah i just i i really love that they you know they managed to make it emotionally satisfying at least in my opinion extremely funny again my opinion you're allowed to disagree and actually deliver like it is it is very rare you know that it is that thing like as a progressive i don't love saying that, but so saying the following, but a lot of the best action movies are conservative because they embrace that it's satisfying. It, you know, rev um, yeah, revenge, violence can be very satisfying. You know, I love progressive action movies like the Bourne movies, but I'm not, I mean, I get why a lot of people would rather watch, you know, uh, a Die Hard, a Rambo sequel. Uh, yeah. Yeah, in any Die Hard movie, you know, they all have some of it, obviously, you know. Uh, I'm, I did, yeah. The first is great. The third, I remember as being great, you know, from a conservative point of view. I, I have huge issues with those movies f as a progressive. Anyway, you know, and one of the Rambo sequels, I, I'm not sure the first, yeah, not really the first one, but any of the Rambo sequels, you know, I get why, like, if you just want, like, to, to sit down and watch something 
where like you know it's silly because it's just a movie but somehow you end up feeling like yeah you know it's 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 a very appealing thought that people who do bad things have bad things done to them that you know the lizard brain goes nuts for that kind of thing and yeah the born movies really aren't about like oh look at it, you know let's rack up a massive kill count let's be extremely brutal to people who are brutal you know it's yeah and yeah you know for for action stories and that's also that's another thing i i love about the show this really isn't an action show it's it's set in a universe where there are a lot of action stories but it's not re so far it's not really an action show Jesse Gender did a great video on this episode, as, as usual. And for the people who think that it's important that there are positive male characters on the show, this is an episode brimming with them. The only negative male character who appears in this episode is Josh. Like, okay, so so therapy, you've got Manbull Ag Aguilar, you've got the vampire, you've got a wrecker, you've got... Uh, I can't believe I'm blanking on... A, a porcupine, you've got Emil Blonsky, there's the guy that drives out, like, they could easily have made him sexist, but he's, you know, the the thing with him is he's kind of afraid of the abomination, they, they never make him sexist. I mean, I don't know if you want to count, but the guy who drives, um, the, the, yeah, the guy who drives Jen home, I mean, we don't really see him or know anything about him, but again, they could easily have made him sexist. You know, a lot of, like, truck drivers are the stereotype is that they are very sexist. I don't know how much the, you know, I could imagine, but I don't know for sure, so I'm not gonna say it without being sure. Yeah, the only evil character in this entire episode is Josh, you know, so, yeah. Now, I, um, I don't know if, um, let me think, the, I don't know if Titania is going to show up again in this show. I understand people who really wanted to see, like, a massive fight, like a like a Hulk versus Abomination, a Hulk versus Thor, either time, or a Hulk versus Hulkbuster fight. I get that versus b between She-Hulk and Titania. I'm not sure we're gonna get that. I think like when Titania showed back up at the wedding, like the It's basically this thing of, you know, even your personal life I can ruin, you know, I, I beyond ruining your professional life with this, um, right on the tip of my tongue, with this lawsuit, I can also ruin your personal life. I can, you know, I can get myself invited to your, uh, you know, I, I mean, this is a woman that she's known for years, okay, you know, they lost, they, they, they haven't been in contact for a while, but that happens. You know, they went to, I forget if it was college or high school together, you know. Yeah, it creates some strong bonds. You know, some some people, you know, the rest of their lives, they're friends with their, their high school or college friends, you know. There was that, um, Young Turks covered this video. I guess it's been a while, I don't know, maybe, maybe... I'm gonna see if I can really quick find Serene Turks old woman. So yeah, uh, TikTok Granny's hilarious rules for her funeral five months ago. You know, yeah, like um, 92 year old. And some of the things she says, like it really sounds like, you know, she's like adamant that there's this one person who cannot come to her funeral. And it sounds like they've known each other for a really long time, you know, and, and she still holds some grudges for some things that this other person did, which I can understand. 
but yeah, you know, some people for the like she thinks that there's some chance that this woman will show up at her funeral and she wants to make sure that doesn't happen. So yeah, they they yeah. It sounds to me like they've known each other for a really long time. And yeah, so Titania is like saying I I am stronger than you, you know. I can I can beat you. First she tries to do it legally, then she tries to do it you know WWF W WWE I yeah, one of those. And the thing that happens is not that she's so physically devastated that she can't go on fighting, which again, when you watch the many MCU projects made by men, starring men, and where a man is the villain, yeah, very frequently, you know, by the end, they are, you know, they might not be dead, but they're so dead, like, Abomination doesn't die, but he is clearly not gonna just get back up and keep fighting, you know, he has lost this fight. Yeah, you know, the, the, that's what, that's the, that's the masculine, the, the hyper-masculine idea of how you end a fight. You know, the, the other person is not able to get back up. Maybe they're even dead, you know, depending on the, the context. Obviously, you know, you don't want to beat someone to death if you're just having a fight, but in the MCU, a lot of these people are, you know, absolute monsters. So, yeah. It makes sense that the story ends with them dying, but the yeah, you know that is the hypermasculine idea idea of how you end a fight. This show is made by four and about thirty something career women, and you know yeah, their idea of a fight ending, maybe especially if the both people are women is, you know, Titania is basically, you know, she's really embarrassed there at the end. You know, the the thing with her teeth and, you know, yeah, she, she loses and it's on camera and all this stuff, you know, it's, yeah, you know, people are not going to be as impressed by her when they see her losing this fight. And yeah, I, I don't know, it maybe she does reappear in the last two episodes, but I could imagine she won't, and I think that might be the end of the the you know the ongoing feud between the two characters. You know, it is a victory for for She Hulk and Jen because she ultimately proves that you know the the even though. Like, like, Titania basically literally attacks her when she's at her lowest. Like, she sucker punched Jen right as Jen, you know, right after Jen threw up. Who does that? And, yeah, it's, it's you know, she came at her at her lowest. She even stands there mocking her like, oh, it's no fun. If you can't, you know, Jen transforms into She-Hulk, stops being drunk because of the, you know, She-Hulk seemingly can't get drunk and defeats Titania who was the one who wanted the fight you know that's a pretty that's pretty definitive you know if Titania like even if Titania walks up to She-Hulk and challenges her again like if there's a crowd someone from the crowd might shout did you forget how this went last time you know this is yeah uh, it's it's more of an ego thing than a than a physical defeat and the the yeah you know it's it's a it's something that helps show jen that you know even if not everybody appreciates you know it's it's another of those things like she's trying to figure out am i still just jen do i want to embrace the she hulk identity and body and all that comes with that, you know, and that was, yeah, you know, she had to embrace the, the She-Hulk persona, so it's another step in her overall, overall arc, you know, she legitimately, she wanted to spend that entire wedding as just Jen, you know. 
So, yeah, I hope that helps clear it up for people who are really jonesing for, like, let's see, you know, more Hulk fighting. I mean, personally, I think I could imagine that eventually maybe She-Hulk will appear in one of the movies and there she will be, you know, she'll be kicking ass like Captain Marvel was in her movie, you know. And, yeah, or maybe the, the, this whole thing with the Hulk blood culminates in there getting to be another major good guy Hulk character, and that character is more of a, a kick-ass, like, we've seen a lot of Hulk action, you know, if you can watch the show, it means you have access to Disney+. Plus. Like I said, Thor fights Hulk twice, then there's the fight between Hulk and... The Hulkbuster and the fight between Hulk and Abomination. You know, that's that's four scenes of Hulk fighting someone who's, you know, as strong or stronger. So, I mean, you could also watch the one where he fights Thanos, but that one did not go so well for him. So maybe, you know, that, that one might not. You know, that, that is such a great way to really establish, nope. You remember the guy who used to be the strongest? Well, here's a guy who can beat him. Without any help, without using Infinity Stones, yeah. So, the... Yeah, I personally love how they're approaching the show. And... Again, like, we men have so many Hulk, you know, appearances in the, in, in the movies... I think it's only fair for women to get a Hulk of their own. And, you know, I'm sure there are women who enjoy the, the Hulk scenes in the movies. Just the, the stereotype is that action is for men and, you know, more emotional stuff is for women. But that is not always true. I saw some people say Jen should probably still ask the Wrecker if, you know, about information about the Wrecking Crew, you know, I don't, I don't really have a good counter argument, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie, it's, it's a, that's a good point, yeah, maybe he's gonna, like, I mean, he knows her normal identity, Everybody knows where she Hulk works. She works for this very specific company. Maybe, you know, there's only two episodes left. Maybe one of those two, he's going to go back into Los Angeles and he's going to approach she Hulk or someone working with her and say, you know, I, I should have said this to she Hulk when we were in group, but. I just, I gotta tell her, you know, and, and that, you know, maybe that's how she comes upon the Hulk King and whoever, you know, it's, it's gotta be the leader, right? It's, it, yeah. So, but, but yeah, it's, you know, it is, you could understand if she, if she did the, the, If in this episode she had tried to get some information out of him, or if he at least offered up some information, you know, he's he's all about like I've changed, I've reformed, but he doesn't tell her how to stop. Like, okay, you are one quarter of the Wrecking Crew, and the uh, you know the Wrecking Crew were clearly working for someone. So are you not gonna tell her about? It? Yeah, I. I think it was maybe more written with the idea of the the catharsis of this, you know, that he has changed for the better. You know, that's also, you know, there you go, conservatives watching this show. The show literally just said, even if you do something incredibly evil, there is a chance that you could reform, that you could become a better person, that the person you hurt could forgive you, you know, and you could even help them with their issues. It's just, yeah. That was such a great, like, Wrecker legitimately does help her 
through her issues. And it was just, it was such a beautiful scene with, you know, she's talking about, you know, I liked that Josh liked Jen. He didn't keep asking for She-Hulk and he didn't leave when I wasn't She-Hulk, you know, and just, yeah, the, the, you know, and, and maybe also the jokes about therapy were a kind of, you know, they're, they're like trying, they're, they're putting on this air of cynicism and, you know, being sarcastic and, and such, but really they do think that therapy works and they want to convey that to the audience. You know, again, like, I don't, there's, In the MCU, there's almost no therapy, you know, and, and the other couple of times, you know, there's the end of Iron Man 3, the post credit scene, I want to say it is, and then you have in Falcon and the Winter Soldier, therapy is made out to be like, okay, to be fair, some of, some of the time the therapy in Falcon and the Winter Soldier does help, but a lot of the time there are these jokes about it, you know, and here, yeah, there's some jokes, but ultimately, like, yeah, this was exactly how she needed to spend her day. Get away from work for a while, talk about her issues, and, you know, the, the yurt, and, yeah, so, so, yeah. I think that is everything I had to say about this episode. So, yeah, really excited for the last two and honestly, I won't mind if next episode also doesn't have Daredevil, if it is the very last episode that has Daredevil, but yeah. Yeah, really looking forward to, to next episode. So, catch you next week.